Thanks for watching TCM. I'm Alicia Malone, and this has been our first night in a two part special on surfing documentarian Bruce Brown. He started making films in the late 1950s, following his surfing buddies around the world with a Bolex camera and 16mm film. He had no assistance, no formal film education, but ended up capturing a particular time in surfing, a time when you could still go to a beach and be the first person in the world to have ever surfed there. Brown amassed a lot of footage in his first few years of documenting surfers. He had a routine of filming in the fall and winter, editing in the spring, and traveling up and down the coast over summer, screening his films for surfers in auditoriums. Our next film was his fourth, and it combines three short films together. It's called Surfing Shorts from 1960. The three shorts include The Wet Set, which shows the Hobie McGregor sportswear surf team wearing the various swimsuit styles popular at the time, and America's Newest Sport, which shows Hobie Altler and the Hobie Super Surfer Skateboard Team. Altler was a surfboard shaper who teamed up with Grubby Clark in 1958 to produce the world's first fiberglass and foam core surfboard, much lighter and easier to manufacture than the traditional balsa wood board. Alta was also an innovator in skateboarding, introducing polyurethane wheels to boards in 1962, and he created a special catamaran that he used for surfing. And in the other short film, Bruce Brown travels with surfer Del Cannon and a 12-year-old surfer named Pete to Japan, where they surf waves at beaches that had never had surfers before. In fact, at that time in Japan, they would close the beaches if the waves got over two feet. Take a look from 1960. This is Surf in Shorts. After Bruce Brown made his first surfing documentary, Slippery When Wet, in 1958, he continued to work non-stop over the next four years, creating six documentaries in total within that tight time frame. As you saw, Surf and Shorts was a compilation of three short films, and over these years, Brown's popularity started to grow as he honed his craft as a filmmaker and a live performer, giving narration during the screenings of his films. And one of the reasons he wanted to make these movies was to help change the perception of surfers, showing they were nothing like the caricatures seen in films like Beach Blanket Bingo. But soon, Brown started to realise that in order to really make an impact, he needed a film that could reach an audience outside of California's surf culture. Bruce Brown made two more documentaries for surfers before he created that film, The Endless Summer, a huge hit with a wide audience. And after the break, we'll see Surfing Hollow Days from 1961. Keep watching. This is TCM. Next on TCM, Surfing Hollow Days, then Big Wednesday, and later Bombers B-52. Carl Malden's in Plain Sight Today on TCM.